Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraust. Oh boy, it's time once again for the Bumblecast. Another day, another Bumblecast. I mean, at this point, we're doing them almost daily. <laughs> for a couple weeks there, we were doing them daily, which is like, wow, it's a lot. It's a lot. Given our upward trend, it might not be too long before we actually do hit daily. Oh, Lord. Uh, permanent dailiness. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. You have cursed us with success with all your contributions from patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members. So thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Yes. And just for that, we will now answer your questions. We don't guarantee you'll like the answers to the questions, but we will answer them nonetheless. And we're kicking things off with one from Nova Poly Duo. Regarding Dr. Starline's admiration for Eggman, I can't help but wonder what Dr. Starline thinks of the other Robotniks. What does Dr. Starline think of entities like Professor Gerald and his creations, by extension? Considering one could see the Doctor's result of creating superpowered organic entities being somewhat analogous to Gerald's creating of the ultimate life form, motives notwithstanding. I am not sure, honestly. Because he thinks he thought the world of Ivo, and Ivo in turn thought the world of Gerald. But I can almost see Starline not getting it, like so many other things he didn't get about Eggman. You know, he sees just what Eggman has achieved, and he would see you know Gerald's achievements as you know, oh, that's quaint. That it's nice what he did back then. But look what you've done, sir. Look how far you've come beyond that. And that would have been a bit of friction between the two of them, I imagine. <laughs> we got a question here from Peter M. Ian, aside from something that may be offensive, what is a potential concept that you hate and despise with all your being? That if Sega asked you to write a story involving it, you'd sooner hand in your pen and quit your job. Huh. You don't write using a pen, so... <laughs> I sometimes physically write down ideas. It helps sometimes. Okay. Actually, whenever we would do a convention and, it, you know, we'd have a slow hour, I'd have like a notebook of just, you know, I need to jot down ideas or whatever. And, and that thing got pretty full sometimes. Th Fridays can be slow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I I honestly can't think of anything within reason that they might do that would make me just walk away. Uh, what about without one, reason? <laughs> I mean, number one, I got bills to pay. Number two, I've been with the franchise so long. I have seen everything from the Deadly Six to the Black Arms to the humans. I don't know what they could throw at me that would surprise me at this point. And part of the fun, and I, yeah, I'm going to say it, it is fun sometimes, is to figure out how to make it work. Now, here's this new concept that doesn't necessarily jive with everything else. How do you make it jive? How do you approach this concept? And if you're not satisfied with how the licensor does it, how do you do it? Which sounds incredibly arrogant, but that's what I've been doing for 15 years is finding how to make everything fit as best I can. Um, and sometimes, you know, they knock it out of the park. You know, you cold pitch the idea of, oh, it's a princess from another dimension who's cursed with incredible fire powers. It's like, yeah, that sounds like an OC. And yet Blaze is the best thing to happen to the franchise in a long time. Oh, yeah. She's cool. She's awesome. That's what makes her great. And you know, Deadly Six, not the most popular thing, but I feel like we used them reasonably well in IDW. You can make them work. Yeah, it's fine. And then we put them away. We, we, we proved the point. They can work. And now we can move on because I don't think we need to belabor that point. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, sometimes I'm just completely wrong. They introduced Big the Cat, and initially I was like, what is this? It's so completely out of theme. Why am I fishing in a Sonic game? His name is freaking Big. Wh what? I don't understand. And then, you know, over time, I come to realize I was wrong. <laughs> over time, and the genius becomes apparent. Yes. And you I've, learn I to eventually love the Big. got it. Yes. 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 As you should. So, I, I honestly can't think of anything that would make me walk away from a Sonic project. I don't think there's anything that they could do 
I mean, Werehog, for pity's sake, should have been an absolute no tolerance thing, but the animations of him are so freaking fun. And there are problems with the game, sure, but there are some stellar elements as well. So I don't know. I don't think there is anything they could do that would make me throw in the towel. That is, that is not a bet. That is not a challenge, Sega. Please don't put me to the <laughs> test on that one. <laughs> you think Sega listens to this show? Pfft, whatever. I got better things to do. Probably. I hope. Here's a question from Noni. Hey, what kind of sort of memes are on Metal Sonic's hard drive? He has no mouth to speak them. But every time he corners Sonic and just like kicks the snot out of him and looms glaring threatening playing somewhere in that cpu inside his head is getting beat down by yourself on a saturday god you're pathetic (laughs) (laughs) we took out the shuttle in sonic number 51 it's playing somewhere in that hard drive you're too slow it's all sonic memes (laughs) Like somehow he went in and changed the entire folder to Sonic.exe. Oh no! Oh mm-hmm. no! Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. no! I heard he had a but cameo at the end of the Sonic Two movie. Out. What was that? Sorry, I talked over you. But he can't speak, so he can't actually do any of this. He yeah. can't say any of it. He can't really project it. It's just it's in his head. He has no mouth, but he must scream. So why doesn't Neo Metal say? Because Neo Metal's too stately for memes. He's too classy. Yeah, he represses that folder. He he hides it. That was his cringe nineties phase. Yes, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sonic is still in his cringe nineties phase. <laughs> it ain't cringe when you own it. <laughs> I guess it ain't cringe when it when you are the not literal nineties. <laughs> Here's a question from Mobius. All of a sudden, Manic and Sonia from the Mobius Light Universe from Sonic Universe have survived the Super Genesis wave thanks to King Sonic and Queen Sally. How would Sonic react to them being his kids from another world? Would they laugh at the idea of him being a king? Would Sonic leave them in Amy's care or Vanilla's? How would both take care of them? And how would Amy react to the idea of them being Sonic's children from another world? And would they scare her off the idea of having speedy children with him? This is like our last episode. This is your fanfic, man. Yeah. This is your plot line. This is not a question. This is a story pitch. So go with it. You've posed a lot of questions to explore. You've plotted the course. Go for it. Go wild with it. Yeah, but Ian, you're the writer guy. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what I do... uh, for the other job this is the answer question job oh okay i have my answer question hat on not writer hat on Mm, okay now when you ask about you know writing philosophy then i have to wear two hats and it gets a little warm but you know that is a little weird that's a little weird yeah yeah you're up in canada so i assume one of them's a toque (laughs) don't took it for granted (laughs) Here's one from Miles Prower Davis. People like to suggest other crossovers, so here's one that interested me. Sonic and Jet Set Radio Future. What are your thoughts? Or possibly a game with an awesome futuristic soundtrack. Even an arcade Sonic Dance Dance Revolution game would be cool to see. Would you two bust a move? I'd bust something. (laughs) I'd I'd bust a leg. (laughs) We had a DDR mat for a little bit as an exercise thing. And I still do. Lee is, you know, was doing these high level songs and dancing and moving all over the place. And I'm on like the lowest level setting trying to keep up. I have no rhythm. (laughs) It's sad. So a dance dance revolution style Sonic game. Yeah. Like that Mario version that got extremely limited release. So, you know, not that, not that kind of deployment, but that kind of idea. Sure. That'd be kind of fun. I'm kind of um, surprised it hasn't happened, but I don't know. Isn't so not, Space Channel 6 uh, Ulala's game? Isn't Sp- that Space kind of Channel a... Space Channel 5. It's sort it's, of... Yeah, 5. Yeah, it's... Uh, it is. It's a rhythm game, but, I mean, you use a controller to play it, not a 
Not a, not sure you can not translate pay, that, but if you, enough. I mean, you could just do a Space Channel Five themed DDR game. That would be cool. Yeah, and cross it over with Sonic because why not? I mean, of course, that's like practically required if you're a Sega property at this point. <laughs> uh, Jet Set Radio Future though would be really easy. The hardest part is figuring out how Sonic gets to their world time, however you want to slice it. But mm. after that. You know, ring portal opens and dumps him right in there. Bam. It's sure. another storybook game. <laughs> and, you know, he likes to grind on rails. He's anti authoritan You know, if that's how they do it here is with the spray paint. Sure. He can tag stuff. He's going to paint stuff while spin dashing through the air. It's going to look fantastic. Oh, yeah. He would fit in. Oh, he'd be. It would just be him kind of learning who the crew is and getting along with them and helping them paint stuff and kick ass that'd be easy easy that'd be great yeah and then i mean it would just be sonic rush music all over again (laughs) (laughs) yeah and really is that a bad thing no no it's not no not at all i will gladly take this i will have this i will take my hideki naganuma soundtrack and his tweets because they are ridiculous that man is crazy (laughs) He learned English from the internet, and that's a very dangerous thing to do. (laughs) Maybe do a super deep cut, and Sonic decides to dress like, as is the custom, and it's like a Jet Set Radio Future spin on the OVA outfit (laughs) that Old Man Owl's wearing. (laughs) It's my favorite clothes. I don't know if that would work. Maybe I'm spinning nonsense, but uh, it would be funny. It's it's neon enough. It could work. Yeah, yeah. Could, I don't know. It would be funny. <laughs> be a nice little thing for uh, us old people because we're old. <sighs> and we got a question from the Might of Gabora. So you confirm that Solaris can destroy the concept of space time and that everything that can be rationalized was on the menu. So can Solaris also consume the concept of dimensions? Uh, if we're talking like your standard three, four dimensions, then sure, that's within the space that he's consuming. Delicious. And once he consumes his home dimension, can he move into other dimensional space and consume that? I don't know. Can he Can he consume Blaze's dimension so she can just hang out with everybody else? Okay. <laughs> that would be good. Also, did I call time eater a she i don't remember i don't know what the order that question was can they yeah i whatever <laughs> what the order of that answer was uh, oh well and here's a question from joe star ssb i wanted to know what helps you get into a comfortable zone when it comes to writing what helps you focus uh it's never one thing some days i'm just in the zone those are good days. The auto zone. Everything just flows, not the auto zone. Well, sometimes it is a little automatic. <laughs> sometimes like, I'm in the auto zone. Literally the auto zone. Like, I <laughs> can't type rogue without typing rouge. Sonic comes to my fingers unbidden. It's it's a big problem. Like, you you probably, on your phone, probably have Sonic as, like, the initial word, suggested word when you start typing something, huh? Thankfully, no, because I don't talk shop on my phone too much. Oh, well, I mean. But keyboard, that muscle memory is ingrained. I mean, at this point, being on the in the Bumblecast Discord, I think Sonic has become <laughs> very nearly <laughs> one of the top recommendations for the first initial word Yeah, for me. I could see it. Yeah. You guys. Uh, <laughs> if it's one of those days where brain no work, word hard. Uh, hopefully I can take a break and do something else. Go for a walk, watch something, play something, do something to shake up the neurons. But if that's not an option, then I have to look at what I have in front of me and either what has the tightest deadline or what is the most fun to work on. If I have a little bit of wiggle room, cause a fun project will come to me more easily and will go faster than working on something that I'm not as inspired by. But if the deadline is, Hey, you said you'd get that in tomorrow, like an idiot, then that, that ticking clock kind of finds energy within you to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely the, the deadline of Bumblecast releasing 
is definitely something that motivates me. <laughs> like, uh, oh, the episode is, uh, we're posting that episode on Monday, huh? And it's Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Better get that done, I suppose. Although I've been tending to work ahead lately since we've been recording on Thursdays. So that's been easier. But well, yeah, it's just the exponential success of the show has necessitated that we be more attentive. Yes. And we we also have a lot, a lot to do. So, yeah, yeah, I've 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 taken a lighter touch to editing some things, but eh, I hope you guys haven't noticed too much. <laughs> it's just a matter of getting all this editing done. So without we're still making the show sound decent, so. I don't want to, like, ruin everything. And we got a question here from the internet person. About timeline splits, particularly with forces. From how you describe it, classic is, quote-unquote, the past now. But if that's the case, why doesn't Sonic remember the events of Mania Forces? And why doesn't Eggman remember the Ruby? I know you probably can't answer, but it's worth a shot. Uh, plot holes! Yay! <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's that you can't answer, Ian. It's that you, well, you can't answer, but it's <laughs> it's not like you're you're restricted from answering. It's that there is nothing to answer with because uh, plot holes. Yay! <laughs> uh, see, I want to have a clever workaround, but it ain't gonna fit. So let's just kind of say sonic forces and you know do the womp 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 in the background and just kind of collectively <laughs> nod and move on <sighs> honestly though in the efforts to consolidate and streamline and make use of what is there not everything is going to fit because that mentality has not been in place in the past, so it, there, there's going to be some rough edges on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're gonna you get a, get an A for effort from your shop class teacher on this, but he's not going to handle it without gloves on. <laughs> oh boy, we got a question from Happy Times. Ian say that Starline really did go join up with Zavok by the end of Bad Guys, and he brings Surgeon Kit with him. What are their thoughts on the rest of the Deadly Six and vice versa as teammates? So Surgeon Kit would not get along with the Deadly Six, and they would in turn not get along with them. Starline, within the context of joining the group, would not be welcome, as we covered previously. And his little things on the side, even less so. Uh, Zavok, however, would probably delight in finding ways of turning Surge against Starline. <laughs> oh no mess with kid's head about how much surge really respects and cares about him oh no and just kind of smile as they implode oh no <laughs> i like it but also <laughs> oh no uh, how would zaz and surge get along they would find a degree of common ground and how much they enjoy beating the crap out of each other because they like a good fight yeah so kind of a begrudging i don't want to say respect a acknowledgement more like yeah 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 something An appreciative like that. antagonism yeah something like that yeah you know, she just looks across the way and says hey Eggle, you'd say something and go no but i'm gonna start something and then they fight <laughs> uh it's like uh antagonistic siblings you know vitriolic best buds <laughs> you know xena makes some kind of comment on you know oh starline dresses you like that and then surge sets her hair on fire stuff like that <laughs> it's a good time it's a good time i like it here's one from exodel if given the opportunity to work with Sega and Koei Tecmo, how would you write a story for a Sonic Muzo game? Have you given it any thought, or even better, what ideas do you have at the spur of the moment? I've talked about ideas before in the Bumblecast Discord, but I'd love to hear what you'd do. I would say make it its own continuity. Don't force it to be beholden to anything else. 
and just be a celebration of the cast. Like put in as many playable characters just here and through badniks. You know, Sonic would be your pretty straightforward, you know, rush in, do a lot of damage to a small area, move on. Let Knuckles be a little more technical, a little more specific. Amy is your big crowd control with the hammer. Uh cream and cheese. Make Amy, him kind of a Amy with the hammer would be amazing. Oh yeah. Also I just like, want to say Muzo games, if you don't know, they are Dynasty Warriors and games like that so. you play as a small group of individual overpowered individuals just tearing through crowds and crowds of enemies yes yes it's like a modern beaten modern beat em up so, yeah yeah um cream and cheese maybe they're more of a gimmick but you know lots of coordination between the two of them two points on the field maybe corralling enemies from massive group attacks uh you know shadow Special goes off, chaos control. You rack up as many kills as you can before the time wears out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh just and then of course, you know, you play through the hero campaign for a bit. And then chapter two, villain campaign, Eggman. Trot out that eggmobile with various attachments. Mm-hmm. And attack all the fuzzy buddies. <laughs> a whole bunch of weird casting things by infinite you know it's a muso game no, there are no rules mephilis comes back <laughs> yeah Some bring everybody back <laughs> minions like just put everybody in there <laughs> metal sonic's maximum overdrive attack and you just go plowing through people in your crackly <laughs> energy shield everybody just put in as many characters as you can yeah classic everybody <laughs> and modern everybody all in the same damn game <laughs> put them all in there and you could uh <laughs> maps could be stuff like if you're going to do just like a green hill map you know you start off as the stage does you know on the surface level but then have regions that go underground a la mania or towards the bridges kind of like bridge zone out of the game gear game or you know, explore different regions of the island so that each kind of mini map has its own locale or go nuts and have a giant you know entire south island map and you know one mini map is your green hill themed thing and then you kind of go underground to reach the lava caves of marble zone and you take this route over here and you go into labyrinth or you go up top and now you're in spring yard I don't know if that would be too resource heavy to really work, but it'd be fun. God, yeah. There's so much you could do with it. And the music. Oh, man. If they don't fully embrace the freaking metal of the Warriors series, then uh, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> 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 and like, of course, you got to call it Toot Toot Sonic Warriors. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, maybe just Super Sonic Warriors. Fine, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I would absolutely adore a Sonic Muzo game. It would be fantastic, and it's absolutely in the spirit of Sonic. It, it would it's so easily fit. So like, you know, playable to call. Well, she's a pacifist. Well, yeah, she's not going to hurt anyone. Chaos will. And that's all the attacks as he just kind of springs up from around her to knock people around. And story-wise, she's kind of restraining him, so it's all non-lethal. But <laughs> she's just kind of floating around divine-like, and every now and again, this puddle erupts underneath her, and suddenly it has arms! Uh, nah, I said... Uh... Your super meter so you get your different chaos levels. Chaos 2 at the bottom meter and then like full freaking meter perfect chaos for just like an entire map clear uh yeah yeah that would be awesome uh i mean there's so many pacifists in hyrule warriors who are out there fighting so i mean why not who cares just just let everybody throw punches who cares <laughs> and then after you finish the villain campaign in chapter two Oh no, the black arms are back. <laughs> Heroes and villains better team up for chapter three. Yep, that's and you right. get to play with all the toys. And then you unlock playable Black Doom, who's throwing meteors and various spatial rifts at people because it's a Muso game and everyone's playable. There's like 50 characters. I don't care. <laughs> all the toys. 
<laughs> all the toys in my plate, please. Bang them all together. <laughs> I want I want all of them. I want all of them. Please. Please. God, why hasn't this happened yet? <laughs> it's <laughs> Sonic series is literally tailor made for this thing. I mean, you can have hordes of badniks. It's literally built right in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. it's right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's all there. You slaughter all these badniks. You free all these animals. They go into your inventory. You use those to raise up your chow. Your chow become equipable to give you various bonus effects in the stage. Just like fairies from Cyril Warriors. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. God, it's all there. It's literally mm-hmm. all there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone at Sega call up Koei Tecmo. <laughs> this is a thing. <sighs> this is a thing. Ah, well, maybe eventually somebody will get a bright idea and realize they could make a lot of money. But in the meantime, we'll just have to answer some more questions. And we got a last question here before we take a break. And it's from Chaos Sonic 1. What is Ixis Vale's real name and bird species? And if you can, what are the names of the other other Ixis 4 elites? And what species are they? Uh, Vale was her name, and I... I think the intention was a vulture. It's been a long time. Uh, beyond that, I'd have to see if there was any art in the flashbacks for the other, you know, what you call it, excess elites. But I don't think we had anything nailed down at that point. Hmm. Well, I guess with that, we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back with more on the Bumblecast. <laughs> And we're back with more priority Q&A here on the Bumblecast. Here's this one from Dove. Have you ever wanted to reach out to the creators of Freedom Planet and see if there was crossover potential? I doubt Sega would go for it, but this is a hypothetical. If you could, would you? I'm not in a position to do that. That would have to be something between IDW, Sega, and the folks who own Freedom Planet. Do they have an official group name? Galaxy Trail, I believe. Okay, so... It'd have to be between all of them. Uh, I would love to contribute if such a thing happened, but I don't have the authority to do that kind of thing. Yeah, I could definitely see a crossover with Freedom Planet and uh, Rivals of Aether, though. Mm. That would Man, be interesting. Yeah. That would be interesting. And here's one from Classic Sonic. Will Classic Sonic continue to be mute for the foreseeable future when it comes to the games, as we've seen in Gens, Forces, Mania, and now Origins? It's one of my favorite things about the character. Uh, maybe. Whatever happens, I want it to be consistent. Like, if classic games are silent, if classic media like Many Adventures is silent, fine. That's cool. I mean, Many Adventures is delightful. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't have to be silent in the comics. It would have uh, been hard. <laughs> it would. We could have been. It could have been done. I mean, that's how and, I initially pitched Seasons of Chaos. Right. Because I thought that's what we would have to do. And they said, no, 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 they can talk. And it's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, but what bugs me is when when you have the crossover stuff and there's classic and modern side by side. And, you know, classic Tales can talk. Classic Eggman can talk. Classic Metal Sonic talks for pretty sake. Yeah. But classic Sonic doesn't. Mm. It's awkward. I, I, it feels so, like they're just trying to... They're they're trying to ignore the elephant in the room there for some reason, I guess. I don't know what's going on there. That doesn't mean like they all magically learned how to talk after a certain point. I, just, I don't know. There, there should be less modern classic crossover, I guess. That we don't even have to worry about that. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it pans out in the future. Because again, classic as a thing is still very, very new. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they really should just call up Julia White, you know? I mean, I don't see why not. Although I heard he retired from voice acting. Yeah, probably. I don't know what he's doing these days. It's hmm. he's, he's shown up here and there, though. So he probably sounds way different, though, to be fair, because it's been 30 years almost. Well, there was uh, he did. He was in a voice fan. In... He was in Sonic in a fan movie from like 15 years ago or something. Not that long, but mm. yeah. 
Was there something else he, he was, was in? He was a guest voice in, I think it was a Teen Titans Go thing not too long ago. Oh. And he wasn't doing that voice, but he certainly sounded youthful enough. And we're like, he sounds kind of familiar, but I can't place it. It's Jaleel White. I thought he <laughs> retired. And... Oh, well, apparently he's uh, he's in the cannabis business now. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Good for him. He probably makes a lot more money. <laughs> 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 probably a lot more lucrative for him on that one <laughs> and apparently his brand is called purple urkel <laughs> yeah nice yeah nice man knows how to brand himself that's right yep <laughs> uh here we go for this one from chaos shadow i was wondering if the esteemed monotreme dr starline could answer my question I know it's a little late, but I was wondering why in the Imposter Syndrome miniseries did you make it so easy for a surgeon kit to access your video diaries? I thought you would have changed your password or updated the computer's security instead of brainwashing them every time. I'm sorry, but the two guest episodes have passed and so has Dr. Starline, so I'll have to fill in for him for now. But on the one hand, it was Starline's arrogance. He set up his network security in a way that he thought was secure, and he's not very good at self-evaluation, let's be honest. And two, Kit's a smarty. Kit is meant to be a weaponized Tails to a degree. So Kit managed to get in on his own accord. It wasn't just sloppiness on Starline's behalf. Yeah, I do find it kind of funny. Like, what what would he change his password to? Eight stars in a line? (laughs) (sighs) Oh, well. I guess we'll never know. Here we go with a question from Buttered Noodles. At the end of Metal Virus, Sonic gets transported into Blaze's dimension. Is this caused by the Warp Topaz, or is it from Chaos Control? And on a similar note, can the Warp Topaz be used to travel through dimensions with enough power? Yeah, it's Warp Topaz hypercharged on wound well, not that word supercharged <laughs> on chaos emeralds yeah i can't use that anymore no hyper is a loaded term in the sonic fandom yeah sorry guys here's one from batman 69 lol how would surgeon kit be translated into the boom universe when they be cheap corporate knockoffs from the starline corporation Hardcore fans who get the chance to be like their heroes or something else. Would there be other imposter versions of the rest of the main cast? Would they lean more towards a boom Eggman kind of threat or a boom shadow kind of threat or somewhere in between? Kind of depends on how reoccurring they would be. And it's a little hard to gauge because, you know, the boom cast was in its original inception is kind of the tropiest aspects of the characters boiled down and then re-envisioned. And then Vector is kind of our standard for the extended cast. So Vector is a detective. Okay. Boom Vector is a detective, but it's for a TV show without the chaotix. It's you know a recognizable aspect of the character, but it's a wholly different approach. Right. So uh, your ideas have merit. They could certainly work that way. I almost wonder if the whole designed to replace the heroes thing it's too complex for boom i feel like that's too meta contextual <laughs> even for that show so i don't know maybe they're kind of grifters like they show up on the scene billing themselves as heroes and that's how they've gotten by they go island to island village to village inventing threats and then taking care of them and being praised until the jig is up and they have to go off to a new town of suckers. So that would immediately put them at odds with Sonic and the crew. You know, are they out of a job now? Do they even have jobs? Is this a job? Do they have to like file paperwork for this? And then eventually they get exposed for the crooks they are and everything goes back to status quo. And maybe they stick around for revenge or something. <laughs> Where's the money? What is money? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, boom had money. Never mind. And we got a question from Ava Arctic. So we saw from the cover art of 267, cover B, on a later issue of Archie, that Sally plays a game at the dinner table on her Nicole. What kind of games is she playing? Flappy Egg, Angry Badniks 2, Raid Robot, Legends, Doom? All of those, but really she's sunk an incredible amount of time and mobiums 
into Sonic Man Heroes, this surprisingly robust gotcha game, but she really, really wants that rare drop S rank Chow as a support unit, and it's just not coming out of the RNG. And you know what? She's royalty. Your daddy can bankroll it. She doesn't have a problem. You have a problem. <laughs> Oh man, Nicole! Well, Nicole isn't stopping her. She's like, okay, just keep going. I don't know. Nicole should hack the game. What the heck is she doing? Well, she would have until Sally put a firewall against Nicole in her own mainframe. She doesn't have a problem. What are you talking about? Oh, Nicole oh. needs to mind her own business. She can stop whenever she wants to, and she just doesn't want to stop right now. <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> The chipmech turned into a whale. She needs an outlet for all of her everything. <laughs> so I guess it makes sense. Here's one from Ozjam. Heel face turn. A trope famous for villains in many stories to turn either good slash neutral and the hero doing the opposite in some cases. What are some examples of this trope in any media that you think both improve slash ruin the story and the characters in it? And how would you have handled differently if it was done poorly? couple of things that immediately spring to mind. Um, Dingo and Xanatos out of Gargoyles are some of the base, best face turns I can think of immediately. Uh, mm. Dingo's was the fastest. You know, he was in it for a job. And then as things got increasingly 90s bizarre, <laughs> instead of running with it, he just said, nope, and backed out. And I respect that. I respect that a lot. <laughs> you just kind of give up on villainy when it becomes too much of a, like, too much of a risk. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, I'm kind of sticking out. with it because this is my gig, but you guys are really worrisome. Okay, now, nah, now, nah, this is too much. I'm out. I'm <laughs> making the most sensible human decision <laughs> in the whole series. Xanatos, I like because it's not... <sighs> It's kind of a half turn. He's still a manipulative, self-serving, arrogant so-and-so, but he's found a hint of genuine humility, and the way that it's earned seems logical. So he's still a bad man, but now he's actually trying to be good in bad ways or bad in good ways. It's, I don't know, it's... It's Jonathan Franks reading the lines. He could read anything. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say, <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, bad example. Uh, and this might be up for debate on whether he turned at all. But Kylo Ren out of the God. prequel trilogy, <laughs> not like, earned I, at all. No, no, and to a degree, it's almost thematic. Like, I still don't buy vader's turnaround in jedi not really no especially after the prequels mm -hmm. you know i murdered a room full of children but they're still good at me no no son no and kylo at the beginning of the sequels i could see that trajectory working because he's kind of born into this legacy and you know the dark side of the force is supposed to be seductive and you know he's drawn to it you know, maybe all these big expectations for his lineage kind of got to him and he decided to rebel against it. And we go down this dark path and then he realizes, well, that's a surface level way of dealing with it. There's a deeper motivation to what I want in life. And then I could see the face turn in that regard. Sure. By the second film, though, I he should have been locked in. Like, he was ready to freaking murder the resistance or the rebellion or whatever they were calling it at that point. Like, the the scene where he is gunning down Luke with every ounce of anger that he possibly can. The way that he's murdered and manipulated others, to me, that's that he was too far gone. That he had fully drunk the Kool-Aid. And what, to me, would have been more interesting is to see how becoming so enamored with that, with the dark side and how it destroys you, how it rots you from the inside out until sure you have all this power, but you have nothing else. What they did was well, honestly just about as shallow pedantic as Jedi. So 
at par for the course, I guess. But yeah, but I in terms I, of movie quality overall, it's Jedi by a mile. I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Oh, sure. <laughs> I, I, I just I don't buy it. I don't nope. feel like it was earned. Nope. Not in the least. Nope. I, I feel like that last movie really was. Here's a bunch of big scenes we want to film, and there's a plot to connect them. Maybe we'll come up with that part later. <laughs> uh, the uh, best face turn I can think of is Zuko from Avatar. Ooh, yeah, 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 he yeah. Is, Shame on me for not thinking of that one. Yeah, yeah. That's really, that's a really solid face turn because he has like doubts, and he's he's not really nearly as evil over time, especially over time as you know he he's like trying to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like he's definitely like trying to be evil, but he's not really pulling it off <laughs> all, com- all completely. He's hurt and he's angry yeah. and he feels powerless, and so he lashes out. Right. Yep. And it's not the right way to respond, but we get it. And God, the end of season two, after yeah. he's got that devil and angel on his shoulder moment, and he jumps into the fight, and there's that beat where you're like. What is he going to do? You legit don't know. Right. You don't know because he, you you followed him up to this precipice. And then Aang gets that look of, oh, no, I'm going to be attacked. And Ali and I both screamed at the screen. No, you idiot. Oh, that that was good. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good. Very well done on that one. Oh, man. Oh, that's another one. Um, Just because I was on a kick recently. Arthas' heel turn. No, yeah. Arthas' heel turn in Warcraft 3. I like a lot. I have no clue. <laughs> the surface level, I mean, the game's how old at this point? I mean, yeah, uh, it's fine. He, he was this kind of holy knight and prince and heir apparent. He was the golden boy. He was supposed to, you know, be the beacon for the humanity and whatnot. And his attempts to save his people from an oncoming plague eventually give way to a bloodthirsty obsession with just being right and ultimately he becomes corrupted and one of the champions of the very evil forces he was trying to stop Hmm. cool and the the scene that's burned into my mind forever is when he returns to the capital having succeeded quotation marks and he walks up to the throne and grabs his father and his the king and the king goes, my son, what are you doing? Succeeding you, father. And then runs him through right there in the throne room. It's just, blah. Damn. The rest of the story, your mileage may vary, but going from, oh, we're playing as the good and heroic humans, and it segues beautifully into now we are the undead scourge consuming all life. I don't know. I dug it. <laughs> How would you have done... Uh... Kylo Ren's thing differently to answer Oz Jam's second part of Oz Jam's question. <sighs> I almost feel like if we zoom out enough, it's how would I redo the sequence? Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> I was but, gonna say like, yeah. Eventually, at that point, you kind of have to just rewrite the whole thing and just start over. I, I feel like just to keep it simple, if we keep the trajectory of the first two, and Kylo has fully committed to this. You know, have his story parallel Ray's, where Ray is finding uh, new avenues and reinventing herself and building herself up amongst her comrades and finding the Force and discovering what it means to be a Jedi for herself and as a protector and all these good, positive things that come from community and uh, support and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You juxtapose it with Kylo becoming increasingly just drowned in the dark side he's this figurehead in a fascist regime that is just using him as a puppet but at the same time he's using them as an extension of his anger and his hatred and just watch as how he becomes further and further isolated and just sad you know he's incredibly powerful like maybe he finds some dark force text or whatever and becomes the bit the big final boss whatever but just highlight how that isolation and the pursuit of raw power is a corrosive thing so that when it comes down to the final confrontation of Ray and Kylo, 
it is someone who is bolstered by the community that she has helped raise up and support versus this one small, hateful, destructive little man. And it's not an easy fight because that kind of fight never is, but they, but good ultimately triumphs over evil here. And in the end, you feel a little bad for him. You know, if someone had reached out their hand at the right time, if he had maybe just showed a little more patience, some, if something had gone right somewhere else, maybe he could have been saved, but he chose not to be. I think that would be a little more poignant and it would certainly be different. It wouldn't be Palpatine back again, somehow shooting the entire fleets down with his fingertips for <laughs> pity's sake. <laughs> what, you say you don't like that? No! <laughs> <laughs> nor did they were all gunmetal gray oh look at all the details we can do in cg it looks like it hasn't finished rendering yet why do you need a moon-sized super weapon when you can do that oh it's because of a convergence on the force whatever because whatever because it looks cool it's completely useless and pointless and stupid and nobody liked it but it looked cool did it though? I don't know. It didn't even look that cool. I saw somebody's fan edit where when they're doing the beam struggle at the very end, all they did was a very simple edit of the various past Jedi saying encouragement to Ray and then having like little blue ghosts kind of pop up around her and help push the beam back. And it made that scene so much better. Yeah. We are getting way off track from Oz Jedi's question. So that, that was, I, I think, yeah, yeah I, okay. I think we're dead. <laughs> Let's move on to a question from Arc Fighter. It's the ultimate battle of the century, the most devastating conflict of all time. Who would win? The Moose from Klonoa or the Waddle Dees from Kirby? I'm not super familiar with the Moose, but spear wielding Waddle Dee is a thing, and he can kick all sorts of ass, so he might be able to clear out all the Moose by himself. Yeah, I suppose. I know, if you're. If you're a Klonoa fan and I am speaking sacrilege, please comment below and educate me. I suppose. I mean, the Moose have spears, too, and springs. They go bouncy, and they've got all sorts of other different forms. I don't know, man. Yeah, but do they have, like, a full Smash Brothers fighting moveset? Uh, good question. That would be something I would need a Klonoa fan to expound upon. Like Bandana Waddle D is not a, played is a nearly fully enough. playable character. That's true. That's true. It's a good point. I mean, you see, he does. He has a banana and everything. But then again, there's also <laughs> bandana moose. So <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I think they fight to a draw. We'll just we'll just make both fans fandoms unhappy and say shy guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from Andrew D. The events of Worlds Collide initially happened thanks to a Chaos Emerald being sent to Mega Man's world after the events of Genesis. After Sonic's world was rebooted, we see that Worlds Collide still happened, but with a slightly different start. In the reboot, Wily contacted Eggman while he was trapped in the white space from the end of Sonic Colors. So did the events of Genesis also happen in the past of the reboot that led to the Chaos Emerald being sent to Mega Man's world? Or did something else like the Time Eaters shenanigans result in Wily contacting Eggman? Also, how exactly did the Chaos Emerald result in Wily contacting Edman, and why didn't they team up with Classic Edman as well instead of presumably sending him home? Actually, how did they send him home? Short answer, Chaos Emeralds. Long answer? Long answer. Chaos <laughs> Emeralds. Anyway. Uh, I don't know if we were ever going to like get into it at any point, but I think the thinking at the time was... Uh, time eater post generation shenanigans sent the emerald over while he stumbled into a chaos control like usage of it to reach into white space, which is able to go bridge between dimensions because it's a null space, maybe. And then they sent classic home because they need to a preserve the timeline and b modern Eggman was tired of dealing with his past self. I think that's how we were going to do it. <laughs> Well, I'm sick of you too, Eggman. <laughs> sick of himself. They're sick of each other, most likely. 
Here's a question from Alpha Mon, or you can. How exactly does Kit's hydrokinesis work? Can he control any liquids that are nearby, like a waterbender, or is it limited to the specific water he keeps in his backpack? If it's just the backpack water, then what makes that particular liquid any different from regular water? Don't think too hard about it. It's cartoon logic, but it does need some rules. So I imagine it has to be within the context of the backpack to some degree. There has to be a direct current between him and it, or he has to be in direct proximity to it. Like when he's talking with tails and all the water on the ground spikes up, it's because it's still immediately in the contact of his person. I don't think he could like water bend the rain or anything like that. Um, <laughs> kind of like this. It, think of it as kind of like per, uh, the artificial perfect chaos, the water within the confines of the AI unit is able to be controlled, but beyond that, it gets a little sketchy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Our last question for today comes to us courtesy of And Tales. Now that we know the Mobians, for lack of a better term, generally reside on islands, whereas humans live on the larger continents, how does Sonic get between islands quickly? Are the islands so close together that he can run across the water to get between islands, or does he need to take a ferry? Doesn't he wish his friends lived on one of the continents instead for convenience? These are the types of questions that keep me up at night. Well, hopefully we can finally get you to sleep. <laughs> With the sounds of my dulcet voice. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> um, I imagine there's numerous ways. There's ferries. He owns a biplane. Uh, if he can get enough speed and they're close enough together, sure, he can run across the water. There's bridges. There's probably warps of various types. I don't imagine it's that difficult to get around from island to mainland and back again. And Sonic's a free spirit. He's always traveling and going places. There's everyone else that kind of wishes he would stick around and help. So, you know, if he needs to see anybody, zoop, he'll just go there. All right. Well, I guess that's it. That's all we got for this episode. But before we wrap it up, we're going to give a big thank you to all the patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members for making this show possible. Indeed. Big thank you to Daniel H., Alex B., James K., John B., Jennifer R., Robot and Combs, Samuel P., Sam Cybercat, Torchbound, Mike B., Dave M., Coupling Crew 128, Salute Your Cat, Andrew D., J. Frost, Do As Diz Din, Hero of Light 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Ryan D., Chris A., Sony, Noni, John M., Jib, Don B., Yami M., Lee H. K., Lisa M., Fiona M., Chevelle, Invade Turbo Tunis, Ben W., Sonic Sonic Sonic, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Tick Tick, Scurvy Pirate Hog, Xander Oni the Painter, Final Neil, Jonathan Just Really Likes Princess Sally, the name is X, Justin S, Solera Stain, Nemrick, Godzilla, Arc Fighter, Dadler the Dalek, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, Ava Arctic, Pedanti Cat, Dove, Quaggle Gaggle, Professor Rye, Red the Super Namic, Nondal, Cameron H, Chad, Liz, Jennifer H, Sapphire Scarletta, Alphamon or Yukon, Joshua S, Omega Watch, Finest Cacophony, Preston M, Starlight Sec, Jolene B, Sonic 84, Noah S, Alex G S, Kajiro Highland, Dapper Shink, Super Sonic Fan, Just a Mountain Soul, Awesome Caster, Radry, Chase L, Ty H, Callum Q, Twilord, Red Wolf, Neb, Yes. Cosmic Cooking Hunter 77 and Tails, Derusival, Maddie H, The Discayan, KJB, John the Real, Wild Luigi, In Zephyr, Wild 48, Mox, T Ranger, The Marble Gardener, Owen BD, Chaos Sonic 1, Miles the Prower, Navare, Exodel, Agent Chaos, 4 Sonic Fan, Puppy the Scholar, Rhythm Raccoon, Miggy Sawdust, Pig Dan 20s, Ty Cyan, Louis J, Michael P, Delta God 77, Curly Quills, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Angela V, Fang the Werehog, Caleb, Classic Sonic, Nova Poly Duo, Chaos Shadow, Timon B, Thievius, Smiley 21, The Flower Garden, Sammy S, Lacey M, Unlikely Veronica 5, Bide Your Time, Lie and Wait, Windskull, Delante, Sky the Desu, Supernova, Indebend, Superior Pizza, Sonic Patch, Tetsu Knife, Thigolf, Sterling Sonic, Crowbo, Sonic Mania 2099, Hadronis, Nils, Steph Q, Pizza, a person buttered noodles miles power d peter m frost the white lion danny the light ryoko shion meta mode wheels 282 hedgehog jamal s and the internet person wow an absolutely incredible list as always thank you very much we will see you friday for the standard q a edition and then after that get ready for a whole bunch of bumblecast minis because uh we got a boatload <laughs> oh boy do we do we do we do we until then, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Catch you on Friday. Phone's ringing, so. Ring, ring, uh, ring, 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 okay. ring, 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 banana phone. <laughs> 
Ah, purple Urkel. <laughs> yeah, I do be that. <laughs> nice. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Soon you'll be the muscle king. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're just working down to not Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I get to the point where I'm not hit by a car and go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Terrible. Mm-hmm.